Mm, boost. Number three, people will love him when he's dead, Gate. Vice President Cheney becoming the latest to insist that history will generously judge Mr. Bush and thus his administration and thus Mr. Cheney too. His quote, place in history will likely grow during the next 20 to 30 years. He trotted out the argument about how Gerald Ford was vilified for pardoning Richard Nixon, but now he's not anymore. By the time of his passing a couple of years ago, opinion had totally turned on that. In fact, most people by then, even many who had been very critical 30 years before, were in agreement that in fact it was a good decision. It was the right thing to do from the standpoint of the country. Apart from the reality that the act of pardoning a crooked president to soothe a ruptured nation bears no resemblance to lying that nation into an unnecessary war and getting 4,000 of our troops killed, and apart from the fact that 30 years ago, or 30 years from now rather, Bush is much more likely to be considered asleep at the switch on 9-11 than he is now, Cheney is also wrong about the idea that Gerald Ford is viewed favorably 32 years after he left office. The last polling on overall presidential popularity done by Rasmussen for July 4, 2000 still had Ford in a tie for the 12th most unpopular president of all time, even though he was only in office for 30 months. Number two, nexus of politics and terror gate. The president's ever-changing number of how many domestic attacks he prevented is backed up to numerous. Officially, that would be four based on his speech at the War College. We prevented numerous terrorist attacks, including an attempt to bomb fuel tanks at JFK Airport, a plot to blow up airliners bound for the East Coast, a scheme to attack a shopping mall in the Chicago area, and a plan to destroy the tallest skyscraper in Los Angeles. Well, it's skyscraper, but yeah, okay. The skyscraper was the one where Mr. Bush got the name wrong while announcing it to the world before he told the local authorities in Los Angeles that he was going to tell everybody, setting off mild panic there. The airliners one is the reason you can't bring liquids in your carry-on, the British-based scheme for which the plotters had not obtained a ticket nor passports, and chemists laughed at the idea anyway. The mall was the deal in 06 where the guy got no further than trying to buy a hand grenade from an undercover FBI agent. And the JFK plot, that was the mutant who thought he could cause an airport to blow up by starting a fire at a fuel pipeline 30 miles away. So thanks for stopping all these. Nice work, Jack Armstrong. And number one, insult the dead gate. This is a White House talking point still, even though your average three-year-old could disprove it using only an Etch-a-Sketch. Spokesman Tony Fratto on the air with fixed news parent John Scott. Scott gave the setup line about how 9-11 was unforeseeable and thus not even slightly Bush's responsibility and said, I mean, nobody was thinking that there'd be terrorists flying 767s into buildings at that point. And Mr. Fratto replied, quote, that's true. I mean, no one could have anticipated that kind of attack or very few people. Yeah, well, it ain't true, and out of respect for the people who died that day, you damn well better stop saying it. A president's daily brief as far back as December 1998 said, Bin Laden was preparing to hijack U.S. aircraft in hopes of trading hostages for jailed radicals. The August 6, 2001 brief, of course, told President Bush, if he read it, that there were patterns of suspicious activity in this country consistent with preparations for hijackings. The FBI agent John O'Neill repeatedly warned of the prospect of suicide hijackings, basically got drummed out of the bureau for saying it. The FAA had distributed a CD-ROM early in 2001 to the airlines and the airports warning that terrorists might hijack a plane in order to use it as a weapon. That Mr. Fratto's employers might not have been expected to know the exact hour of these attacks does not give him or anybody else the right to perpetuate the lie that 9-11 was impossible to conceive. Clearly, many inside this nation's government anticipated it. It was Mr. Bush and his gang who chose to ignore them.